Hey everybody, welcome back to Rapid Meteor. Today we will be going over the fifth video in section two, creating content and adding collections, creating a Java DDP client. Now this particular video is not required for the course, but we wanted to give you a good example of what it's like to use another DDP client. So we, in this section, we will go over how to find other DDP client code. We will specifically prepare a Java DDP client, and then we'll connect it to, into our application using some event handling. So we want to be able to see what other DDP clients are available and where that code is, and Meteor provides a great explanation for that. We're going to go to meteor.com slash DDP. There we go. And this is a description of the distributed data protocol, or DDP. Okay, towards the bottom, we can see that Meteoropedia, that's a name, yes, maintains an editable list of independent DDP clients. Okay, here you can see a list of various different clients that have been developed, and there is sample code for those. We're interested in Java, so we're going to go ahead and click on that, and there is a default Java DDP client. Now we're going to use one that's tweaked just a little bit from this, and we'll go ahead and put the URL up here, but it's the github.com slash advantageous DDP hyphen client hyphen Java. Okay. And the reason we're using this one is it just has a couple of examples and it's got a really great quick start for us, as you can see here. So you'll be able to check out the repo. You'll be able to use Gradle for you Java fans out there to create the jar file and then get going on it. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started on that. We're going to go ahead and clone that. Again, it's github.com slash advantageous ddp hyphen client hyphen java dot git. There we go. We've gone ahead and cloned that. We'll go into the ddp hyphen client hyphen java directory, make sure that everything looks good there. And there's a readme file inside of there for specific instructions in getting this started. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tweak our settings files for Gradle. So we're going to go into the build.gradle file, as you can see here, and towards the bottom of that file, you can see the project, and it's currently sent to examples simple subscription. We want to change that to snippets, okay, to match what we're doing. And we don't necessarily need to do this, but it's just a little bit cleaner, it helps out, okay? And then to, on line 133, you can see there that instead of the simple subscription, we would like the snippet subscription. And we're going to change the name from example to snippets. So we have IO advantageous DDP snippets, snippets subscription. We also want to make one change to our build file. So we're going to go into settings.gradle and inside of here in the include statement, instead of simple subscription, because we changed the name, we're going to make this be snippets subscription. Okay, everything looks good there. Make sure we save our file changes. And now we need to go into the Java itself. The first one we're going to tackle is going to be the subscription. So as you can see, if you navigate down here, we're going to go into subscription.java, okay? And we are going to add a particular string to the subscription name, and this is gonna be what we call CNAME. And the reason why we are adding this CNAME is because if you remember, for the admin view, we are actually subscribing to snippets-admin rather than just to snippets. So we need to make sure that we have the channel name in there as well, okay? So we are going to copy now the get subscription name for the getter, and we will change that to get C name, as you can see here, highlight that text, yep, there we go, and then we want to return that C name property, okay? Everything looks good there. Yep, make sure we save our changes. Okay, and now we need to modify the constructors. Okay, so the first constructor, the default constructor for subscription, we need to add that CNAME instantiation. So in the arguments list here, we're going to add a string CNAME. All right, and as we initialize, we are going to say this dot CNAME equals CNAME. Okay, so now in all of the other overloaded subscription constructors, we want to make sure that we don't disturb them, but we need to put something inside of that CNAME property. So we're just going to copy the subscription name and add that into the CNAME property. So for any of the other use cases that we're not using right now, and this is probably not the best programming technique in the world, but it's going to work for our example. Okay, so we'll go ahead and add those in there. And now this particular subscription overload 
constructor is the one that we're going to be using. So we're going to make a copy of it. And we're going to add in the arguments list the CNAME string. Okay, there we go, string CNAME. And of course, the call to the default constructor, we will add the CNAME. So this one will be unique from all of the rest. So we need to continue with the rest of these. We'll go ahead and add the subscription name property to the arguments list for the other calls to make sure that all of those will work. Now again, not the best coding practice in the world, but it works for what we need to do. Okay. All right. So on to the next file. This is the base subscription adapter.java file. And inside of this adapter file, this is where we will have the registration of the subscription. And here you can see that it says get subscription name. Now we don't want to use just the subscription name because we're looking for a specific class library or a specific channel. And that's why we're going to change this from get subscription name to get CNAME, just like that. Okay. Pretty much the only change you need to make in adapter. And now we are ready to move on to our particular object and class code. So we're going to navigate down into DDP client Java. We're going to go into the examples and we're going to change the name of this folder from simple subscription to snippets subscription. Okay. Once we've done that, we're going to go into the source files, go all the way down, navigate all the way down until you get to the DDP example. Okay. The name of that folder also needs to change to snippets. And for those of you that know how to do this in Java, you know why uh, that needs to change. So we're going to go ahead and change this to snippets. And then we'll change the name of the file itself just for clarity. So once we make that change here, we'll go ahead and update this instead of simple subscriptions.java or simple subscription.java, we'll go ahead and put in snippets subscription.java. Great. Everything looks just fine there. We are now ready to start editing that file. So we'll go down into our examples, navigate all the way down into that snippets subscription.java file. Okay. And we're going to change the name of the package from DDP example to, you guessed it, DDP snippets. Okay. Scroll down just a little bit here. And the first thing that we're going to do is change the class name to snippets subscription. Okay. And that's going to be the class that we will be referencing um, to create our listener. All right, so now when we are listening to events, we need a way to be able to print that out to the console. So we're going to mimic the print tab function that you can see there, the print tab method, and we're going to create our own called print snippet. Okay, and this is going to be very simple. We're going to output the URL, the text, the owner, and the description. Okay, and we are able to access those properties through the getters, the get URL, get text, get owner, and get DESC. All right, so you can see here we have very similar functions between print tab and print snippet. And we're now ready to move on to the registration of the handlers. Okay, so the first one we're going to go to here is the endpoint register handler. Okay, and you can see inside of here we've got a subscription and we're subscribing currently to tabs. We definitely don't want to do that. Remember, we want to subscribe to snippets admin. That's the one that lists everything and all the activity that's going on. Okay. Now, in order to make sure that we have are accessing the correct class or correct C name, this is where we're going to enter the C name. So we really care about the snippets class, so we're going to add it there, and that's what the C name is for. All right. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like inside of our subscription.java. You can see that there's the subscription name, there's the class, and then there's the C name. Okay, moving back here, we have the subscription name, which is definitely snippets admin. And here we need to change this from tab to snippet class. Okay, there's the class. And then, are, of course, is the C name property of the snippets. All right. So it looks like everything's ready there in the subscription. We are now going to go into, and in the same file here, we're going to go into the endpoint register handlers for the add message and for the changed message. Um, events. Now there, everything inside of here is a tab. We want to modify all of that. Okay. So we'll quickly just uh, do a multiple select here. Thanks to sublime text. We are able to do this multiple select. All right. So it looks like we've got uh, most or all of them. We'll go ahead now and delete out the word tab okay. and add the word snippet. All right. So it looks like it's changed in every place. Oh, looks like there's one that we missed. It's in system.out.println. 
So we'll go ahead and change that from added a new tab to added snippet. One last thing in this file that we want to show you is on line 95, you can see the endpoint.connect. And you can see that currently it is pointing to localhost 3000. Okay, that's because we'll be using this example in this particular example for the Java DDP client. We'll be using that on our local host. However, if you would like to modify that to a production location, real simple to do, you just add it just like you would a URL. So here, if we were going to, for example, hit packed-snippets.meteor.com, all we have to do is add the slash WebSocket on the end of it, and we'll be able to connect to that particular DDP server. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and change that back when we want to do this here on the local host. But just in the future, if you'd like to use it, that's where you would be able to connect that. Okay, so now we are in the snippet subscription.java file. And here we need to declare our actual snippet class. So we're going to create this from scratch. We've got the public static class snippet. And it's very important as we go through these that we make sure that the properties in the getters and also the names of the particular properties match exactly what is inside of our JSON objects coming from DDP. So you'll notice that URL is all capitalized, everything else is lowercase, and instead of us creating a string called description, we're going to create a string called DESC, and that's because that's what it is in the DDP output from JSON, okay? Now we need to declare our getters, here is the one for the URL, the get URL, and we will return, of course, that private URL string. And we'll do the same thing for a setter here. Okay, so we will say this.url equals URL, right? And then we need to repeat this for owner, text, and desk. And in order to uh, speed this up, we'll just go ahead and fast forward a little bit here. But this is what your getters and setters should look like. So you've got a get URL, set URL, get owner, set owner, get text, set text, get DESC, and set DESC, okay? With all of that in place, it looks like we are ready now to compile and start listening, okay? So we're gonna go back to our terminal inside of the Java client sample folder, and we'll CD into the DDP hyphen client Java folder. And here we're going to just do a simple Gradle jar, okay? And that will configure um, based off of the build file that we set, a lot of things will be up to date, but some things will need to be able to be compiled. Great, looks like everything was built successfully. If you run into problems here, slap a dash I onto your uh, Gradle jar command, and that will give you some output so you'll be able to debug. Okay, so looks like that build was successful, and now we need to run that Java file. So we'll do the Java dash jar, and we'll put the name of the path up here for you, but it's examples slash snippets hyphen subscription slash build slash libs slash snippets hyphen subscription dot jar okay and immediately when we run this you can see here it is listening to all of those events and now remember the first time that you as a client connect to a ddp server it tells you everything is new in fact here are all the snippets that's why we get all of these added a snippet all the way down to the bottom here added a new snippet Okay, so now if we go into our interface and we change something, so that says modified, and let's go ahead and change this from, to really declare our love for user number two. We'll say, yes, he definitely is better than user number one. We'll go ahead and hit uh, shift enter and notice in our command line that it says that that particular snippet was modified. And there's the description from the modification. Okay, so our Java DDP client is in fact listening. Now let's explore just a little bit about how this actually works inside of the snippet subscription.java file. You can see here the endpoint.register handler. Okay. And inside of here we have our adapter.subscribe. And we know that we are subscribing on that snippets hyphen admin channel. Okay. We're listening for the snippets class, as you can see here. And remember, we had to do that customization because the default example just assumes that whatever the name of your subscription is, that's the name of the channel or the class that you're looking for too. Okay. In here, we have two other registered handlers. We have the added message. And you can see that we were able to say, hey, there's a new snippet whenever that happens. And on a changed message, that's where we say snippet and we give the ID for that snippet and we tell it that it was modified all using the print snippet method. OK, 
Okay, so now if we create a new one, we're going to see here, because remember we have our U content URL listener going on at the same time, um, when we added that new URL for Smashing Magazine, you can see that number one, it declares that there was an added snippet. And then because our content URL or our URL checker modified that to add the URL property, you can see that we also have a record in our terminal about that snippet being modified. And it was modified almost immediately after it was created. Okay, so any changes we make in our UI are being listened to by our URL checker and also by the Java DDP client. So in summary, there are a lot of different DDP clients out there in a lot of different languages. We've seen where you can get those from. We have prepared our Java through the subscriptions and also through the class declarations. And we connected that up through our register handler uh, methods. Now we want to emphasize that this section was completely optional. In fact, there's code from future sections inside of this particular section, but we think it gives you a good idea of how to use another language's DDP client. Our next video is actually section three, creating clean web and REST services. Very, very exciting if you have RESTful clients or RESTful servers that you would like to interact with. Stay tuned for that. Thank you very much, and we'll see you then.